Hey guys, I'm Rich from Neowin, and today we're unboxing the LG Velvet. Now, this is a new line of smartphones from LG. They've discontinued the G series and the V series. You know, I had only known that they had discontinued the G series, but apparently it's the V series too. And they want to just give their phones names now. And the whole idea is that instead of like just doing a spec bump every year, they, they want to produce something meaningful. And LG has actually been saying this for a couple of years. I think it was, they started saying that around the G7 launch or the V30. It was around when they introduced the Thin Q brand, which was their brand for like AI stuff. And what's what I love about the Velvet is that they're not using the, the Thin Q brand. In fact, in the reviewer's guide that they sent, they mentioned the V60 and they didn't use the, the Thin Q brand in that either. So, um... Yeah, I, I've always hated that. It's like, is it Think? Is it Thin Q? And and then they change and whatever, you know. So I'm I'm somewhat excited about this because um, they're, they're trying to separate themselves from the pack, which LG doesn't do often. And I've noted this a few times in my reviews is that their phones just seem a little bland. You know, the, the V60 impressed me a little bit because they actually went out of the box went out of their box for colors because they didn't make a black one and they had a really sexy blue one with a gold frame and it looked really nice you know but at the same time you look at what other companies are doing like um huawei they have they they started doing these gradient colors a couple of years ago and they look really nice and then other companies followed suit and you know, look at Samsung with the Infinity O display and other companies using a notch. And LG was one of the last to put a notch on their phones. You know, you know, um, they're not doing anything first in terms of design. So, so that's what they're really trying to do here is is doing something that's a little more inspiring. So this thing comes in. Let me see. I got the list: Illusion Sunset, Aurora White, Aurora Gray, Aurora Green, Aurora Silver, and New Black. So sadly, there is a black model. But um, they, they talked a lot about how the reflections and the colors and I think Illusion Sunset and Aurora Green are going to be the winners. I don't know what's in this box because LG put together a nice press kit here. This is something that I really only ever see from OnePlus. But uh, yeah, LG, LG did it here. So let's get this box open. And at the top, we've got a reviewer's guide and some cards. By the way, that's another thing that I only see from OnePlus is a book as a reviewer's guide rather than a PDF, but I did read through this whole thing, and, um, you know, obviously, you, you know what, you know what that shows, though, like, like, that shows a level of care in the product, so, so I'm always happy to see, um, something like that, so here's the box for the phone, does it say what color I get, um, Aurora Gray, all right, so <laughs> we've also got a dual screen accessory here, so, um, I've seen different different variants of this as well. I've seen I've seen it in black. I've seen it in white. The ones I've seen on on devices I've had, like the G8X and the V60, uh, those were black. But I, I saw one uh, video where where there was a dual screen accessory for the Velvet in white, and man, that looked nice. Wait, hang on. I was putting this away. Oh, there's there's more stuff in here. All right, let's see what else is in here. Um, so this is a charger and switching power supply, 15 watts. That's an interesting looking charger, but sure. Um, the, the reason I assume that they sent this charger is just because um, this is the European model. So I assume that there's a European charger in the box. It's a nice, nice case here. I don't know if I'm going to want to use a case though, because we're going to see. I don't know what this is. So this is phone soap. I don't really know what that is, but there's a little instruction guide here. So we can just take a look. Um, ready to sanitize, right out of the box. Plug phone soap pro into power with provided cord. Place phone in center of sanitizing bay. Close lid to begin, to begin disinfection. After five minutes, remove newly sanitized phone. So yeah, it's just uh, to sanitize your phone, which is... Uh, pretty cool, you know, in this, in this age of pandemics, you know, you can, uh, easily, uh, obviously that doesn't come with the phone, I assume, you know, unless they have some kind of deal in whatever market you're buying it in, but that's fine. That's uh, that's pretty cool. It's a cool, uh, little extra thing. 
I do love it when they send those little extras, though, I, like a big press kit like that, because it's just, um, I, it, it makes it makes the video more fun, because there's just more stuff to talk about. So here we go, yeah, this is the, the black dual screen, which is, or is it gray? Is it, I don't know if it, it is, it's more gray, which is pretty cool. I've, like I've said, like I said, I've seen a couple of these before with, with the, uh, with the V60 and the G8X. I think they did it with the V50 as well, so this would be the fourth generation of the dual screen. And it's it's a pretty cool accessory. Um, it has some limitations versus just, you know, building a dual screen phone. If you look inside here, there's a little dongle to charge. Now you notice there's no USB-C port on the bottom. You just plug the USB-C into there and then that's how you charge it. If you, you know, I like the thing is with the dual screen, Phone accessories are a tricky thing. You don't want to carry them around all the time with you in case you want to use them. So, so I would just end up keeping the phone in here all the time. But then you end up with a big and bulky phone. So, you know, it depends depends what you want to do. And then you don't end up using this at all. So let's get the phone open because I want to see what they're talking about here. All right, so here we have it. This is Aurora Gray. All right, this is quite nice. It's um, It's got a, a very reflective surface. It's meant to be that way. Um, it reminds me of the Huawei P40 Pro. I got the black model and it reminded me more of like a hematite, more of like a mirrored, a mirrored black type of thing. It's, 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 a, it's a really nice design. And um, you know, it's, it's got that, um, the new camera design as well, which um, triple lens camera, which is 48 megapixels in the main sensor, eight megapixel ultra wide and five megapixel depth. And the whole idea is it's the, what do they call it, a raindrop camera where it's meant to be more minimal. And what I like about it is that it does stand out from the pack. And, you know, that that's really just something that, that always kind of, you know, the, all right, let's put it this way. Every phone that you see has almost the same camera, Every, like everything coming out this year. Right, so so the iPhone did it first with that squarish with rounded corners camera module, and then you know uh, Samsung had the rectangular one. Huawei did it with the P40 Pro, and now we're just seeing these rectangular camera modules with rounded corners, and like it's just what everybody's decided to go with. So seeing something that's a little different here, and the only camera bump is with the main sensor here, which is cool. That was one thing I liked about LG um, with. Uh, I want to say the, the G8, where or maybe it was the V50. It was one of those, or maybe both of them, where, where there was no camera bump. That was a big focus for that year, was that they just, there was no camera, it was completely smooth. And it was good. You know, like, it's something we don't talk about anymore. We started getting better and better cameras, and those better and better cameras started sticking out from the body of the phone more and more. And, and we kind of stopped talking about the fact that, that, it really just has this big bump. Hey, look at what else is in the box, by the way. USB Type A to Type C cable, and then of course, as I predicted, European charger. All right, here we have the LG Velvet. It's got a 6.8 inch, 20.5 by nine P OLED display. The screen is quite nice, as LG is usually pretty good at that. Let's talk a little bit more about the design because that's one of the big focus. That is the big focus here, right? So. I'm, you know, obviously it's picking up fingerprints already. That's no surprise for such a glossy device. Um, talked about the camera design. I gotta say that um, I've seen the pictures of the Illusion Sunset and the Aurora Green, and um, I feel like that those are gonna be the winners. And and you know, the, you might want to check those out if you're buying this device. But um, another thing they talked about is that 3D arc design they're calling it, and the idea is that it's got these curved edges. And it's supposed to fit comfortably in your hand. And it really does, because honestly, 6.8 6 inches is not that big. Because phones aren't getting wider, they're getting taller. You know, 6.8, remember the, the screens are measured diagonally. So as the aspect ratio changes, it's not actually making the phone wider. They're just getting taller. So yeah, it's got those curved edges. It's curved on the screen as well. And then um, there are a couple other things. 3D sound engine uh, LG talked about, and that debuted with the V60. And the idea behind that is, um, you know, great speakers. And remember, 
along with the, the speakers, we have a headphone jack. LG is, well, Motorola did it, but there are very few companies that are still offering a headphone jack in, in flagship smartphones. And the whole, you know, uh, LG not only has a headphone jack, but they have a really good headphone jack. And if we pull down our quick settings, it might still be in here, but I don't think it's there anymore because it made no sense to allow people to turn it off. But it used to not be on by default, by the way, but they ha they have the 32-bit Hi-Fi quad DAC, and you can hear the difference. Even just using regular headphones, you can hear the difference over another device. And what, one thing that was nice about being able to turn it off is you could literally toggle it on and off, and you could you could hear the difference. And it was a great way to test it. One thing I hate about LG is the, the pop-ups in the software. Um, let's see. Oh, there, there was one before, and I... Oh, yeah, there it is. Phone safety. Do not remove the battery when your phone is unresponsive. Like, do I need a pop-up for that? And it only happens on LG phones, but do I need a pop-up for that to tell me not to remove the battery on a phone where you can't remove the battery? Uh, integrated search. What is going on here? Let's talk about the LG dual screen, which is somewhat redesigned because now it comes in a different color. I, I'm guessing there's a choice in colors because I have seen different colors, and that's nice because the black one was somewhat dull. And we're gonna just got to fit it in here. It's a little... Oh, there we go. So, yeah, now it fits in. <laughs> it, does, it, it snaps into place there. So... You have a little icon that comes up over here, and obviously it's an LG phone, so you need a pop-up around that icon. And so what we can do, turn on dual screen, and now that comes on. So what you'll notice about the dual screen first is that it has a notch. There's no camera, but it has a notch. And the reason it has a notch, just like every dual screen has had a notch, is because it has the exact same display as the device itself. And that's a, that's a key element right there because that's, a, that's in the interest of color calibration and all that stuff. You have the exact same display panel, you know, you can't have any issues with colors. So you notice LG has some wallpapers that go together like that. Not everything works together like that. For instance, uh, LG actually shipped a browser that, that works with the, the dual screen. And the way we do it is, well... I think I have to put it on the main screen first. So you can just use three fingers. Well, maybe not this time. So we're gonna use another <laughs> another app because that one's going nuts on me. But you just use three fingers and swipe. You can switch from one screen to another. And now if we have an app, it's gonna open Google, I guess. We can open that dual screen menu here. And then we could say, oh, Chrome doesn't do it. Oh, never mind. It turns out this actually has to be turned on in settings just to allow for you to do it. That browser, that whale browser, that actually does it, but that's the only one that does it by default. But they added some support for Google Apps as well. So now if we go back to Chrome, we can just open this dual screen menu if it'll let me. Now there's a wide view option and we can just do that and it'll show it across both screens. And so now, I mean, the thing is, it, it doesn't happen natively. So a lot of Microsoft apps support dual screen now because Microsoft's coming out with a dual screen phone. Doesn't work with the LG dual screen. These work independently. These are separate app drawers. So you could open up one app over here, one app over here. You could swap them back and forth. Another thing you could do is you can actually, whoops, I open the phone app. You can actually go and use the bottom as a keyboard if the screen is not locked. God, I, I, I have to say, I do find LG's software infuriating yes because rotation lock is turned on by default because why wouldn't it be um because it's a key feature but if we pull up the keyboard whoops split keyboard you can easily swipe that's just not working so one thing that you used to be able to do <laughs> i don't know why you can't do it now uh you could use the bottom screen as a keyboard and so um that's just you know not happening right here but whatever and then if you don't want to use the, by the way, another thing you can do, um, it, I, I assume you could do because I've used dual screen devices before and I naturally assume that they, they work the same as previous generations or at least those things still work. So you can pull up games here and you can actually create your own uh, game pad. So notice how that happens and we got to go through obviously a bunch of pop-ups because it's an LG phone. But there's, there's different game controllers that you can use. 
and then you can actually create your own game controller. So that's just another thing that you can do with the dual screen accessory. Now, the last thing about the dual screen is that it does make for a pretty thick device. It does have a screen on the front where you can go and you can see notifications, notification badges, the time, the date, battery, which is pretty cool. Um, the back is textured. It's meant to provide an easy grip. And then, of course, there's a space for the camera. And then you, of course, just once you don't want it in there anymore, you just pop it out like so. It's pretty snug, but uh, it does come out. You know, it's funny. Uh, LG used this, this corner camera design. Ugh, it does not want to come out. All right, got it. Let's just use that fingerprint sensor and sign back into the phone. LG used that sort of... Uh, Oh, there's got to be a pop-up because it's an LG phone. And um, LG uses that, that corner camera design where previous devices, they had just had a camera in the middle. So you would just press right in the middle and it would pop out. So now you're just pressing in the corner. And then, of course, you got to clean your phone because now you got fingerprint sensor, uh, fingerprints on your, on your camera. So, um, yeah, that's the LG Velvet. So despite my being critical of LG's software, which infuriates me, um, I am excited about this device because the hardware is pretty cool. They're going outside of their box for, for design, which is awesome because I've been critical of their design in the past as well because it's it's always been kind of bland. They're good phones. You know, they're, they're always good phones. The hardware is good. It's just, it's just not new. It's not doing anything that anybody else isn't doing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, so the colors that like they obviously put a lot of thought into this. It's a nice display. They did a good job. The software sucks, um, as usual. But what we could do is we can install another launcher. We can install another keyboard. You know, which I'm gonna do sooner rather than later. But um, but you know, it's it's a cool phone and like it's Android, so it's easy to to swap out. Like software is not as big of a deal on on Android because it's easy to just get your own stuff. You know, um, good hardware, Snapdragon 765G, um, so it does support 5G. I don't know if this is going to support US 5G because it's a European model. So uh, 6 gigs of RAM, 4,300 milliamp hour battery, 128 gigs of storage. Um, that dual screen is 2.1 inches on the outside. You know, um, so that's that's the, uh, the LG Velvet. So the price, they haven't announced this yet in the United States, but um, they will. And it's going to be um, under $750. And the way they put it is under, you know, the converted European price, you know, or the same. So that's around $750. They did say on some carriers that it's going to be $100 less. And what I take that to mean is that it's going to be $750 on Verizon and then $100 less on everyone else. Because for all of Verizon's phones have to support millimeter wave and sub six 5g and that's not easy it's expensive verizon only has millimeter wave 5g so that's that's they they need that and they're going to roll out sub six later this year so um that's why their phones tend to be more expensive whereas t-mobile i mean it's also not optimal for other carriers because other carriers do have millimeter wave too but most of t-mobile's phones are millimeter wave T most T Mobile's 5G phones are millimeter wave only because T Mobile's nationwide uh, 5G network is 600 megahertz, it's sub six gigahertz, and then they're adding Sprint's mid band, which is 2.5 gigahertz, also sub six. And the, but they also have millimeter wave in select cities, so most of those phones just don't support that. The only ones that do are the ones from Samsung, the Galaxy S20 Plus and Ultra, and that's it. You know, so um, that's it, guys. I don't know when the Velvet's going to launch in the U.S. They are going to have a U.S. announcement, so um, stay tuned for more. I'll have a review in a few weeks. I'm going to test out this lovely camera design. And, um, yeah, it's like it just feels good to use. I don't know if I'm going to use the dual screen as much because I don't feel like the dual screen is the story this time. For instance, with the, with the V60 and the G8X, like the G8X, it was the dual screen. It was a G8. It was mostly a G8 with a dual screen accessory. But, um... You know, the, this phone is just so pretty that, that I'm, I'm probably going to use it without this accessory uh, for a little while. So uh, stay tuned, guys. I'm going to have a review in a, in a few weeks. I'm Rich from NeoWin. Have a great night.